my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon Nostalgic Runner. And we are back for um, a review for The Real Housewives of Potomac. Um, well, actually, we're doing the, we're going to do a combination to, to as well. I'm, I'm very behind on that. Due to the, um, the United States of these Americas, we had the election. So, yeah, and it didn't turn out the way. Anyway, we're not going to go into that because we're escaping, right? Yeah, we're going to escape for now. Um, <laughs> but anyway, um, we are back. And, of course, my cat wants to make an appearance where I change things up. But, um, yeah, so this is just a brief synopsis of what happened with The Real Housewives of New York City. I mentioned I'm not really reviewing it anymore. It's like a full video, but I am still watching it. Um and so I'm kind of using this as kind of like, okay, it has potential. Um, this episode was probably like not as bad as like the other ones have been so far, but it still just ain't it. Um, they really do need to just kind of like go back to the drawing board with it. Um, so I'm going to kind of go in order for every, every single person that's on the cast. I ain't going to hold you. Um, I feel like Raquel is carrying it. And the problem is she's the newest, newest person on the show, but she's the one that seems to me, in my opinion, she's literally the most interesting person on the show. Like her individual story is interesting enough where you can kind of center things around her. Um, to the point where, honestly, I don't know why Jenna Lyons is still on the show. She should have just did the first season and then left because she's not sharing any of her personal life. Um, but... Like, Raquel, to me, is a much more open version of a Jenna Lyons, in my opinion. Um, and what she does for work is just as interesting, if not more, because it's also from a perspective of a person of color. Um, and then even her stories of her being, you know, queer um, in the, in, in how that works. Because um, her and, her and um, Jenna Lyons have a very similar story as far as, like, how they came out and stuff. So I don't think we necessarily need more than one person representing that. And really, Jenna's not really giving anything when it comes to the show. Like, she's literally just phoning it in. Um, so that's my thing with that. Also, too, um, um, Cy, she's holding back. If Cy was a little bit of how she... Honestly, if Cy was the way she was last season, just beyond apologetic and... and to a certain degree, I kind of wish she would just triple down on the way she was. Um, she would be a decent villain because her um, kind of backtracking, they don't have anyone on the show that really can do that and take it take it on the chin. Um, Bryn's trying, but like, I don't want Bryn on my screen. Like, <laughs> and honestly, you already know how I feel about Bryn, so we're not going to, we're going to just skip all over that because I feel like she's like kind of, she's not New York to me. I think she's definitely Indiana trying to be New York. That's how I see her literally. And um, so, yeah, no. Um, who else? Aaron. Aaron seems to be the only one who could bring the girls together. So I think she's necessary to keep her. Um, oh, by the way, this episode was really centered about, so they had, um, Aaron decided to throw a single de Mayo party. And, um, even though she knows it's like not really a Mexican thing, this like an American thing. Um, she, um, did, and the reason why she's doing it is because we find out that she has a Moscow brand, um, liquor brand, her and Abe, they're business partners when it comes to this. And so this is basically to launch that. So that's the event that they end up having towards the end of the episode and all the ladies come together and they patch up their differences, but like their differences didn't make any sense. And it just kind of, I don't know, like the end fell flat for me. Um, cause all the issues kind of came ahead, but like it didn't. And that's kind of, I guess the overarching issue when it comes to the show, things get resolved, but they don't get resolved. And because they don't really go into it. And no one and no one is willing or ready to double down or triple down their views other than Uba. But because Uba is not the best communicator, and I'm not saying that to be shady, to even like I'm not trying to be um what's the word? Um 
I'm not trying to make fun of her the way Bryn has multiple times. It's kind of very cringy. Um, but because like Uba leads with emotions, it doesn't really spell out her issues all the way. It just doesn't translate as her being someone who do who's doubling down. Um, now, if it was Sai doing that, it would translate. Because Sai would say exactly what it is and would communicate, communicate it probably a little bit better. But since Sai is on this journey of, you know, healing, if you will, if you will, um, it's not working. So anyway, okay. And then Jessel, um, Jessel's feeling herself way too much this season. Like we, unfortunately, and that was part of the problem, I hyped her up. Um, from the first season. And really, that was a mistake. Because now she's feeling herself and she's doing too much. She And she's too aware of the cameras. And really, everyone on the show was too aware of the cameras, which is a huge problem. Um, but, like, she herself definitely is doing too much. She's coming off as super, super, super pretentious. And what we liked about Jessel before, she came off pretentious but relatable. This time, she just comes off as just kind of try-too-hard pretentious. And honestly, Pav and her husband's more entertaining to me than her. And, but one thing that did happen in this episode that we did visit was that um, we got to see, um, they're talking about going to couples counseling, but it's for the wrong reason. Jessel wants to go to couples counseling because she really wants to have this daughter really, really badly. And really they should just go to couples counseling because they suck at communicating. And, um... I think both of them live in the land delusion, but diff in different ways. So um, I don't, I don't know how it's going to pan out, but because Jessel is kind of in this era of feeling herself, it it's not a story I want to follow as much as I would if she was still kind of the version of herself that she was last season. Um, if she was that same Jessel from last season, and it was this kind of stuff we're talking about that I would maybe like, you know, oh, okay, cool. But because it's not that, I'm kind of, I don't really care. And then Re Rebecca Minkoff, she's just kind of there. She's not, she's not a good fit for this show at all. Um, what else happened this episode? Yeah, that's pretty much what happened this episode. Oh, and then Bryn, the only person she talks to is her brother. And then even when her brother was like trying to console her, give her advice, she cut him off and all that, still being well herself and I felt like she kind of manipulated her brother into saying what she wanted to hear as feedback on camera that's what I got from that because her brother was going to say more than what actually happened and it's like girl so and I feel like she maybe has always done this all her life so the pattern of her being kind of condescending and, and things never getting resolved. And also too, her brother said to be the bigger person and she did not do that. So yeah, anyway, um, that pretty much is what happened on the show. Um, again, Raquel's story is just the most interesting. We got more, so we learned more about why she kept her engagement a secret. And the only reason why it came up is because um, I guess Jenna's trying to keep her engagement secret and then until she didn't because now it's like they show an article of, of it on, in Us Weekly and Raquel kind of put her perspective and two cents of why you would do that and it's because her and her ex-husband were so in intermingled in their businesses and they basically made more money as a couple because they were marketed in the art world as a couple and so then you know, separating, they kept a secret for over a year. And then when Mel popped up, it, the art world was just gossipy and just saying the most and saying a whole, whole bunch of horrible things. So she stopped really going to art, art world type shows because of the backlash she was receiving. Um, and now the dust is settling and they're engaged. And then also another conversation happened when it comes to Raquel and whether her mom's going to be invited to the wedding and whatnot. So really Raquel's story to me was most interesting in this um, episode. And so far, really in the whole season, Raquel's story is the most interesting to me. Everyone else's, 
I don't believe them all the way. I think they're phoning it in. I think Raquel's the only one that's being like transparent on the show. But anyway, so that's pretty much it for The Real Housewives of New York. Um, next, um, I think I am going to use the same video and put it for Potomac. Um, next time moving forward, though, I will use this for, um, I think I'm going to do it where I use this for, it's either going to be for Potomac like I'm doing it right now, or um, in most cases, it's probably going to be, this It's probably going to be like attached to um, Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. Um, the only reason why I'm doing it for Potomac this time around is because I'm so late with that review and I need to really um, do that. Um, and so you're going to get that like now. <laughs> anyway, uh, moving on, let's get into the Real Housewives of Potomac. Okay, so um, the episode with the Real Housewives of Potomac, by the way, this is a um, review for season nine, episode five. This is called Blast from Everyone's Past. And here we see that um, it's a continuation of Mia confronting Karen um, when it comes to um, the butt dialing of it all with um, Karen saying, according to Mia and her friend Joy, Oh, they think I'm going back to Ray. Um, and of course, Karen psh, 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 deflecting like she does well and does best. So it kind of immediately gets dropped, but then also in the reverse on Mia, like why did you hold on to something from three years ago? Mia had a quick answer. She's like, you came for my friend and I'm coming for you now, AKA um, Jacqueline. Cause Jack, cause you know, Karen has made it known she'll see it for Jacqueline, especially for after um, what she said, which side note, I feel like Karen's going way too hard on Jacqueline. I get that Jacqueline was kind of using Karen to have something. So I get why Karen is going off on her, but the way she's going off on her, it, it is a lot. Um, so it's one of those things where it's just kind of like, okay, I get it, but what are we doing? Anyway, so um, basically Jacqueline didn't really have much to say when it comes to this. And Karen was like she, she had it covered. And um, Stacy was really, really shocked by this because they're just like, man, it's like every chance they get, they come back at you, Karen. And Karen's like offering advice to um, um, Stacy about, you know, hey, as long as you're telling your truth, there's nothing that can, that needs to happen here. Also then... Before that happens, though, Mia does ask um, Karen about um, if her if things are good with Karen and with Ray. And Ray and Karen is alluding to they're having issues. Um, but she's using it. The reason why she's saying it, it's not for the reason what you think it is. It's not her necessarily being transparent. It's more or less because this is what she's, it's her angle of what she's using that cause the accident because she keeps calling the DUI situation an accident because she's fighting that she's fighting a case. So we see we understand why, but again, they they didn't get Karen and they, they thought they were going to. But anyway, so they all leave, at least the other friends, Mia's other friends end up leaving. And the rest of the ladies pretty much are waiting for Wendy to turn 40. They stay up with her and wait till midnight. Um but before they do that we see that Mia, Ashley, and Jacqueline are basically commensurating together when it comes to the Karen situation. And I'm like, oh, see, I see what this is. Ashley ain't got nothing to do, so she's going to, you know, work with Mia. Because honestly, so far this season, Ashley don't even need to be here. She's not really doing anything. Um, Mia kind of took on that spot that Ashley would be. And Jacqueline's also assisting Mia in doing this. So... There's no purpose for, like, Ashley at this moment. Like, honestly, I think this might be Ashley's last season, like, actually, because I think they're winging her off the show. But anyway, neither here nor there. And then, um, so while that's happening, then we see that Stacy ends up FaceTiming TJ, and they're talking, and it's so awkward. <laughs> it's so awkward. Um, I don't know if I believe the relationship, like, at all. Even like the platonic, I, I don't know if I believe it. Um, but 
you know what? They might be doing it this way for a certain reason. Because, and I didn't think about this, but if they're not, if the divorce isn't finalized yet and there's a assets and things like that that need to be separated, I would think that St um, Tracy, sorry, Stacy would need to actually tread lightly on how she approaches things. Um, because I'm not sure how Marilyn is when it comes to like, if you're, if you moved on or not, how that affects things. Infidelity, I'm not sure how they are about that in that area. Um, so that might be also why they're treading lightly. But it does seem like their conversation was super rehearsed. But then out of nowhere, um, we see that Wendy shows up um, and then um, Jazzy shows up and they kind of say hi to her too. And then they have their own, um, Jazzy didn't really have her own thoughts, but Wendy had her own thoughts of the situation. She's like, yeah, they seem like two church kids that like are dating each other for the first time. As long as I'm out of the chat, it's fine. And then fast forward, we then get Wendy. Um, she is, all the ladies are there. They're in the pajamas. Um, and Karen's still kind of shading Wendy when it comes to how the party, like, the way she's celebrating her birthday. And I don't know why Karen cares so much about it, but whatever. Um, but um, Wendy shows gratitude. She shows he's grateful. She does a speech. And then she turns 40 and everyone starts twerking. And then from there, then Wendy reflects on her time. I mean, kind of like her time on the show slash also like what she's accomplished in her 30s, like all the way to this point. And it was beautiful. And honestly, Wendy girl, I did the same thing when I turned 40. I did the exact same thing. So I totally get it. Um, Cause she's, we're, 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 we're the same age, same year. So I get it. And then fast forward, um, they, they of course go to bed and then it's technically officially the next morning. Um, we have Mia and Jacqueline and they're reflecting briefly on the issues with Karen. But then they really start getting into Mia and Gordon and how Gordon is just hurt by this whole entire situation, rightfully so. And Mia's like delusional behind still is not understanding like why he's acting the way she's acting. She's acting so brand new to the whole entire thing as if what she's putting her whole entire family through is not messy. And um, Jacqueline's trying to actually give her sound advice about the situation and um, Mia seems like she is open to the sound advice, but like I even know this that Jacqueline is giving her sound advice, but with kid gloves. It's not straight shoot, straight shooter, no chaser type thing. But I mean, they're best friends, so maybe Jacqueline knows the right way of giving her advice without Mia flying off the handle about it. And so. In Mia's confessional, she is still blaming a lot of their issues on the fact that Gordon's bipolar. And I'm actually kind of offended by it, to be honest. <laughs> I'm gonna hold you. Um, I don't like this narrative that she keeps doing about Gordon and his um, mental health um, to excuse her part of her shitty behavior. Because at the end of the day, you did not have to leave him and then hop, like, you didn't, the, the relationship that you have with another man did not have to intertwine with you have a relationship with Gordon. And to me, it seems like that was probably on and off the whole entire time. Because we knew Ink was, has been in the picture since you've been in high school. So something in the buttermilk is just not clean about the whole situation. So it makes me, it, it really irritates me that Mia is trying to make it that it's a bipolar, it's a bipolar, she couldn't handle it. Okay, that part might be true, but like, let's not ignore or deflect the fact that like you, as a result, you literally are making Gordon look horrible out here in these streets. Now, Gordon as a person, I don't feel as bad about because he left his wife for Mia. So, I mean, whatever, like you, um, you know, play, play silly game, play stupid games, get stupid prizes type situation. So I get that. But it's the mental health part that I don't love. I don't like that narrative. And I really need Mia to like kind of, you're, you're not a therapist, so stop it. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so because uh, basically I think I mentioned it before, but with Mia, Gordon is just constantly sending all these text messages 
about how he feels, how he feels uh, like humiliated and all this other stuff. But then the tea that we get at the end of the scene is that it turns out that like Mia right now is a breadwinner and is paying, you know, is basically taking care of Gordon financially. Um, see, but Mia be lying and I feel like previously this would not be true, but I kind of do believe it now because this is, I think, the third season for Mia and Mia was the major story of last season, even though last season was kind of mid. Um, but because she was a standout last season, she probably did get a decent pay bump where she would be someone who's taking care of Gordon. But the thing is though, Mia saying all that, acting like she's been that the whole entire time when we know it was the other way around before. So it's like, it's, it's kind of annoying, but anyway, from there, we go into a nice, nice, beautiful scene. And the scene is um, with um, Giselle and she's back um, at home and she's at the twins, Angel and the Doors um, cap and gown ceremony. And it was so beautiful. Um, we see that Giselle does a speech. She's reflecting in the confessional and Giselle now is a true empty nester now. And Jamal Bryant was there too. Pastor Jamal Bryant was there too. She also kind of shares, you know, how much her dad was there throughout the years, making sure the twins are good. And um, one thing that I would say is a bright side and one thing that love or hate Giselle, one thing that you can't say is that Giselle um, is not an amazing mom. It, it comes off like she is just such an amazing mom. And she has this now, the, these home videos that the whole world has seen to reflect her time with her kids because this is the ninth season. So they start filming when they were nine and then like the oldest at like um, Grace at 10. You know, because this last year was her graduation. They're they're back to back. And so it's really kind of cool. But anyway, that is where we leave off. And then we go back then to Lake Norman for um, day two. Baby, just a side note. This season so far, I know it's only been five episodes. Way better than the past couple seasons. And um, there's a common denominator why... Uh, why um, Roni's not doing well, but Potomac is. The former producer, Eric Fuller, was over Potomac and he ain't there anymore and it looks way better. And now he's with, in New York. Just, just let that sink in. Just let that sink in. I know maybe the producers, like the higher ups, maybe think it's given what needs to be gave, but like, I, I just, I'm just, observations here, just observations. But anyway, moving on. Um, it's the morning and the women have a kind of a brunch situation going on because um, we found out, you know, that they have a chef and that brunch looked good. So they're having mimosas and having them a good old brunch. Um, and Wendy is like, you know, celebrating her birthday. She has a sash, you know, has a tear and all that good stuff. And Mia, um, Wendy asked about what that, the criteria is for the day. And... It seemed mid. I ain't gonna hold you. It, it was kind of a weird idea. They all kind of sighed her and looked at her like, okay. Uh, but then from there, Giselle actually FaceTimes Wendy and sings, go 40, it's your birthday. And it was actually kind of cute because I do love that, whether it's producer driven or not, I do love that Giselle let their beef go and they really are trying to form at least like some cordialness and it, it doesn't come off as forced as I thought it would. It actually is what I'm kind of looking back. I'm like, this is what could have been if you would have just let that go seasons ago. Um, but anyway, it was cute. Um, they ask, um, Wendy asked when she coming, she states, yeah, she's at the airport right now. She's on the way. Um, and there's, you know, Wendy's like, yeah, we're just having breakfast, but then we're going to go off and do our thing after that. She's like, okay, cool, cool, cool. And then, um, Wendy also asked like, you know, how did the cap and gown ceremony go? And, and, you know, Giselle's like five stars. They, they did that. They did that. And then from there that, that's it on that. And Karen, you know, stays like, yeah, y'all came out like 
Um, Karen states the obvious, like, man, you two have came a long way. Like, I just love that y'all can actually, like, talk and stuff. And um, um, immediately, Jacqueline says, like, the shady comment. And it could come off as if it feels directed towards Karen, but it wasn't obvious. But Mia made sure it was directed towards Karen. So, like, they're still trying to tag team, um, in my opinion, the way I'm seeing it, they are still trying to tag team Karen. It's just now Jacqueline's not leading it anymore. She's doing a, like, a little snide things here and there, and Mia's going all in. Um, which I'm not even, I, to be honest with you, I'm kind of happy that like Mia is leaning in, in her villain era because you do need someone to stir up the conflict. Um, and because she, she, she is, at least in this particular moment, she's like, yeah, I said it. <laughs> I was like, anyway. Um, but then um, Kiana steps in. She's like, okay, I think y'all should just kind of let it go when it comes to Karen. Y'all just keep tagging her. Like, can you let it go? And then um, you have, um, you have even like, um, Mia kind of like, well, no, like, I don't know why it went from like Kiana just trying to tell her like, hey, like y'all chill on that to like then Mia decides she's going to attack, um, well not attack, but go back and forth with Kiana now and mentions her past about her having like a drug dealer boyfriend, ex-boyfriend. And speculatory, I think the ex-boyfriend might have been the one that she was like, um, I don't know if it's the same one that, you know, was a fiance that passed away or not. But it can't. It came out of left field. It was very forced. And then um, Kiana's like, okay, and you being a stripper and what? Like, and they, one thing about Kiana is like, is very forced. And, and then also too, we knew this was going to happen with Mia and her getting that chair because she is so full of herself now. And they literally are having like a, a moment where they're literally talking about the flute situation. Like the flute, like, the, and so she's like, yeah, you're still working on your flute. So like, I have my flute. And then Kiana's like, well, the difference between you and me is like, I didn't need a flute. You needed a flute. And then she's like, no, I didn't. Yeah, I did. No, I didn't. They're going back and forth. And then um, Wendy in her confessional, she's like, that's, and cause then out of nowhere, then Mia's like, okay, stitches. To Kiana. And y'all know, that's from, you know, the fight, the GNA fight. And so they're still going back and forth. And like, uh, Wendy's like, that was kind of low. Why did you say that? And, um, you know, and also kind of checking like um, Jacqueline because Jacqueline's trying to deescalate it. But Jacqueline had like selective hearing thinking that Kiana started. And she's like, no. And then quickly, Wendy corrects her was like, no. Mia started and Wendy's and Mia's like and did I did I sure did start it and I was like and then from there we had um so also too <laughs> this was chaotic was also kind of like before it got dark where she mentions the stitches situation um when they were going back and forth between the drug dealer stripper thing we have Stacy and her confessional and Stacy Please keep how you do your thing, do your thing in these confessionals. She is gold this season so far when it comes to her confessionals. She has me cracking up. I I reround that confessional because she 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 had me cracking up. I was like, oh my gosh. She's like, well, you know, two things can. I mean, you know, th th there might be some. There may oh, there's a lot of things going back and forth, and there may not be some truth in all this. Wait, wait a minute. Wait, but Mia really was a stripper, right? <laughs> but back to where it got kind of dark. And Wendy's like, that's not okay. Um, and then that's when Jazzy and then, you know, all that happened and Jazzy broke it up. She's like, hey, 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 we're not doing this. This is Wendy's birthday. This is going to be about Wendy. So, yeah, this is done. Which, they actually stopped. But then you had Ashley and her messy behind ask Kiana, I was like, so wait, do you really have a scar? 
knowing that Ashley's indirectly the reason for it and she knows that it happened because she was there and she saw it. And Kiana lost it, rightfully so, and just like stormed away. I, I'm a firm believer that she stormed away because she wanted to, I'm sure she wanted to hit Ashley at that moment. And Ashley was doing that thing that she always does where she pretends she doesn't know what she's doing, but she knows exactly what she's doing because she's kind of an evil, vile woman. And part of me's thinking, if you go back to the beginning when I mentioned that Jacqueline, Mia, and Ashley were all commensurating, I think they, they did this on purpose. I think they had a plan. That's neither here nor there. I might be a little cynical. Um, cynical, is that the word? Anyway, like, I don't trust Ashley. Y'all know I don't trust Ashley. And she ain't got nothing else to do. So what else is she going to do? Um, but anyway, that's, that's what happened there. So in the same scene, um, Jazzy checks Ashley. She's like, girl, why would you ask her that? And Ashley's still playing dumb, still being really, really stupid and, and big, playing stupid. And Jazzy's like, if you actually really pay attention to her face, you can see the scar. So stop playing. And I love that. Um, I'm loving this group right now. These group of ladies are bringing it. And um, so then after Jazzy checks Ashley, um, then we have um, Stacy basically trying to keep the peace. Like, okay, this is about Wendy's birthday. Can we be done with this now? Can we please be done? And then Kiana comes back and um, Kiana comes back. Sorry. Side note, let me apologize profusely and ahead of time. Um, I slur my words a lot. So sometimes names are not always my forte. So Kiana, if I've said your name wrong multiple times, my apologies, but I know it's Kiana. I know there's an R in your name. But anyway, she comes back and she checks Ashley. She's like, okay. I, and she's like, you know, she collected herself. She's like, look, Ashley, you have no right to ask me anything when it comes to like the scar. Okay. So don't do that again. And that's that on that. And then Jacqueline is like, I don't even know how it got mentioned to begin with. And then both Kiana and Jazzy and even Wendy looked at her. I was like, girl, are you well? <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. And I'm confused too. Like, how did she, were you asleep this whole time? Like the hell. But anyway, then Karen's like, hey, to switch the focus. Let me ask you, how are you Mr. How are you and Mr. PP? Because we know that she calls like her um, ex co-parenter man or wherever he is to Jacqueline, Mr. PP. And Jacqueline answering the question, seeing nothing wrong with her asking the question. Like, yeah, no, we're co-parenting. We're doing a great job. We're doing this, that, and this, and uh. And also, by the way, um, Karen did say, like, hey, I'm about to be messy. Like, just not, she's like, I'm, she, so she did warn her, let, let her know, like, girl, I'm about to be messy. And so she answers the question, no big deal. And just, and then, so they're like, we're not together, but we're working on it. And she's like, oh, so you stood by him through his 25 convictions? And I was like, what? Now I understand why this episode is called a blast from everybody's past. This is exposure season. People are getting exposed left and right this episode. Okay, okay. So as this is getting revealed, um, Wendy is like, what? And so like, you see Jacqueline going hum, 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 hum. But in her confessional, of course she has a voice and she's like, these are old allegations from like, these are old convictions from years ago. And what we find out is that her ex is a police officer. And apparently he got in trouble internally through the police. Um, and so she's like, yeah, that's great that she's deflecting about stuff that happened in the past. But like, what's going on currently? And that's what Jacqueline said in her confessional. But of course, here at the moment, stumbling, stumbling. Kind of reminding us why she's a friend of and she will never get a flu. <laughs> Because then after that, 
then um in Ashley's confessional, she's like, she does like Karen does this all the time. She does this to deflect and she has her boxing gloves. So she's like, bow, 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 bow. And then Karen in her confessional has her boxing gloves. She's like, don't mess with me. I'm not the one or the two. And I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry. But if you are not a wordsmith and you don't know how to gather the girls, I would leave Karen alone. I'm just saying. And not, not really anyone on this show can really check Karen and has really successfully done it like ever on this show, to be honest. Um, I think really maybe the only person that may have been able to do it somewhat successfully is Wendy, but Wendy just isn't that, that's not her personality. She only like, she doesn't go after people um, like some other ladies do, but anyway. And so all this is happening and then Wendy's like, so... Your man has a whole entire, like, multiple convictions, but yet you're trying to come after my friend and, like, her ex-boyfriend from the past. Got it. And then she storms away. And then as basically Jacqueline knows she is not winning any of this and she's just like, and she just now feels like she's being attacked. She's like, why can't we just let everything be in the past be in the past? And then you literally have Kiana, Wendy, Jazzy, and Stacy's like, yeah, let everything be in the past. And I was like, they did that. Oh, and Karen. All, all of them were like, yeah, yeah. They were outnumbered. Like that little scheme that um, Mia... Um, Jacqueline and Ashley tried to do, failed. And now I think they know it's not going to work over there. Um, so, yeah, interesting. But um, also, too, it probably helped a lot that Giselle was not anywhere to be found. But I'm not sure if Giselle is on that kind of time this season where she's going to be off in the business like this. Because this is kind of, I think this is supposed to be a, a Giselle redemption season. So we may not even see Giselle ever in this kind of conflict anyway, but yeah. And so it still has an end. The conflict is still conflicting. And we now see that Jacqueline and Karen are going back and forth yet again. And um, yeah, Jacqueline should probably quit while she's ahead. And Jacqueline just will not. And she's like, well, you got two DUIs. Like keep saying it to her. And she's like, I ain't got that. And because Jacqueline tried to play victim here, I was like, well, how would you bring something up from the past? And it's like, girl, were you not here? Like, you started this. And really, Jacqueline did start this. She got the party started. You don't get to get the party started and hide your hand. You better stand in it, girl. Are you new? And side note, this is Tangly Jacqueline's third season. Like, she was a friend of... Two seasons ago, she came back a little bit towards the end of last season. And then this is now her third season. If you don't get your reading glasses together, then you better like leave it alone. Because I, I guess I'm starting to think, and this is what, this is how Karen beginning me every time. She gets all of us like this. I feel like Jacqueline might have, this argument seems like there's more to it than what we saw on camera. It makes me think that Jacqueline has really been trying to like do more than what we saw at the the scene when it comes to like defaming Karen's character or it could be Karen doing the most or it could be a little bit of both it could be a case of two things can be true but like um yeah the thing is Karen kind of made it very known very earlier on the season even when it came to the events of it all that um yeah, the ladies have her back. And I don't understand why um, Jack was trying it. I mean, we'll see. Child, this is an argument that will never end because Jacqueline and is still standing on Karen's neck. And she's like, you're going to bring, because what triggered, uh, what's triggering Jacqueline is the fact that she's like, you're going to bring up a man who's not even here. You know, you're going to bring up a man who's not even here. And then, uh, as she's saying all this, then Wendy is entering the chat. She's like, you brought, you literally brought up 
my friend's man who my friend's ex situation is not even here. So oh, so now it's defamation. <laughs> Wendy, this whole entire time is sending me because one things are certain, two things for sure. And I think a lot of us forgot, but like Wendy and Kiana are friends in real life. Like that is like, they actually have a friendship outside the show. So like just as much as Mia and like Jacqueline are riding and dying for each other, Wendy's activated on her birthday. She's actually kind of killing it. Because they got nothing for Wendy. And she's like, oh, so what's that formation now? I was like, girl. <laughs> Wendy's getting me. She's killing me. She's killing me. So also, too, the way this ends is that basically Wendy and Wendy shut everybody up. Because they kept bickering and wouldn't stop. So she shut everyone up. And then um, Ashley, because she's messy, she wanted the mess to continue. And she's like, and she sat, she's basically got in Ashley's face, like, sit your ass down, sit down. And then as like Ashley's trying to go back and forth with Wendy, um, Stacey's like, it is her birthday. Show some respect. <laughs> and so they end the scene with a toast led by Wendy that this is the lowest of the low when it comes to this scene, until it comes to this. We're moving forward. It's my birthday. And toast to that. And they move on. So we think. <laughs> Child, when you think it's over, it ain't over. They just all went to their respective corners to regroup. So we have um, basically... Um, really, it's just like Jacqueline, um, Mia, and Ashley regrouping. And everyone else on the other side. And none of them are wordsmiths when it comes to the three. So, like, I really wish they would just let it go. Because it's not going to go anywhere with them. Because they're still trying to press um, Karen. They're in definitely trying to press Karen. They left Kiana alone. And we, we already kind of know Kiana's and her situation. That was collateral damage. And it's only because Kiana butted in and stopped them from going after Karen. But the problem is that that's going to continue happening. You're going to have the others continue to stop that from happening. Because now, you, unbeknownst to you doing it that way, now you got Wendy activated and she's like, you came for my friend. So now we're not good. And yeah, this is about to get real messy, but like entertaining. <laughs> I ain't gonna hold you. I am entertained. Are you not entertained? I'm entertained. What's getting me though? Um, so as Jacqueline and Mia are talking about Jacqueline, you could tell this is a rookie mistake. Um, and Ashley even says it so in her confessional. She's like, this is very much a rookie mistake. Like after a while, you ease up. And Jacqueline's not doing that. And they're like, because it, it's kind of clear to me now that Ashley is not going to chime in on this at all. She's leaving it alone because she knows to leave it alone because she saw what just happened there and she don't want that to come back on her. Um, and I think the rest of the ladies even know it too, which is the, also the other reason why they're not going to say anything, whether they actually agree with Jacqueline and what's going on or not. So you're also probably not going to get Giselle doing it either. Like, especially since it is like, we keep forget. like, I, I don't think we're forgetting, but like, as we're watching this and it's still happening, she's still fighting this. She did not um, plead guilty to any of this stuff. She's fighting it currently right now. And this was filmed back in like June, May and June. Like right now it's June because, um, or late May. Um, it could be either late May, early June. The reason why I say that is because um, Wendy's a Gemini. <laughs> like, and so yeah, anyway. So Stacy goes into um, the room where Mia, Jacqueline, and Ashley are to just, you know, try to figure out why are they just going so hard on Karen. And apparently, we just find out that. 
Stacy didn't know anything about the DUI stuff. So she's visibly shocked and she's like, oh my gosh. And what's dirty and I'm like, not okay. Because again, we actually literally talked about earlier on this episode about how Mia is, you know, weaponizing um, Gordon's bipolar disorder for her. Now she's trying to spin it. And she's like, yeah, we're coming because we're concerned. We think she should, we think she needs rehab. And you could tell that's not what it is. Um, it's not as bad as like Tamara, but still ain't that. We know it's not that. Um, and so Stacy is like, I, I'm not, I'm not doing this with y'all. And she walks right away. But she does go right to Karen. And I think this is, and yeah. Um, also in Stacy's confessional, you could like, she's like, like saying charge after charge and are putting all the charges like on the screen, like the producers are putting all the charges on the screen. And it is all related to the one thing. And But the thing is though, and I think this is the other thing that I don't think people really know. If this past your first offense, if you have a history of any type of like drinking and driving issues, which Karen in the past has, the second time around, they could throw the whole entire book at you and just put charges on charges and charges and charges on you. Um, whether, because all those charges are very similar charges, but they can literally throw the book at you. And this is, to me, I mean, yeah, I, it's clear Karen, I think Karen did do the DUI situation. She definitely drove under the influence because she had open container or whatever, at least it was reported, allegedly. But... All the other charges, that's just an add-on because it's not her first one. Um, because also after the after the second one, it's a felony. You could lose your license for good, depending on the state. It's like a whole one, like you don't want these problems, um, which is also explains why Karen is fighting it. Because you really do not want these problems when it's not your first time. So... I think that's the other caveat that people do not know, especially if you're not familiar with that kind of situation. Um, I think I've been candid on this channel. I've mentioned before, I've actually, um, unfortunately, I had one back when I was like 21, um, but I was 21 and young and dumb. And it was pre-Uber and Lyft days, it was in Indiana. And, um, you know, I, I don't do that at all anymore, at all. Like, um, even when I went out for the election, um, to watch the election, because I knew I was going to probably be sad about it, because unfortunately I wasn't really surprised by the results. Um, I took a lift there and took a lift back, just because I knew. Um, yeah, but anyway, neither here nor there. Stacy did that. Stacy did that. So she went immediately to Karen and, like, told her, like, look, I'm loyal to you, period. She actually did things a proper way, ironically. Um, not really ironically, because we've already saw so far that that is Stacy. She's proper, she's prim, she has class, she has demure about her. And she's like, I'm gonna write for you regardless, Karen, whatever it is, it doesn't matter, that's what it is for me. But, um, and you know, Karen lets her know like, hey, these are allegations, I'm fighting them. That's what's going on. Um, and like, it's out there in the public. I, I'm not surprised that they did that. Like, cause Karen, you know, she is an experienced housewife. So she knew that this was going to happen. And we know, you know, this is Stacy's first go around. So she didn't know that they, they can take it this low. Cause I, to me, it seems like she's never watched a show. Um, which I'm okay with that. I actually love, I love, I keep doing what you're doing, Stacy. You are killing it. I like love, I love, I love your Fresh, you have a very freshness about you. You're kind of giving me Cynthia, Cynthia, um, Cynthia Bailey vibes where you're neutral and try to be like the voice of reason, if you will. And I love that. And so she basically tells them, tells Karen not only that, but they basically said that you have a problem. We should be taking you to rehab. You agree that you want to go rehab, all this other stuff. And then the episode, and then, but the way she said it, it wasn't in a way where she was attacking Karen at all. She was like, 
she said it very slow, sat her down, and she was like, should I be worried about you? That's all I want to know. If I should be worried about you, okay. Um, she's like, because I don't really believe what they're saying, but I don't know. And um, it basically ends at to be continued. And yeah, <laughs> this was a good episode to me. This was amazing. Like, I don't understand how New York is just so bad, but all the other housewife shows are so good. Anyway, that does conclude the video. Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. Yes, I know this is a different setup yet again. Um, I think I mentioned before when I wasn't on camera that, um, cause I had someone in my comments complain about my mic that I was using before. And, um, I also don't love that mic, but I think it's everything to do with the room that I'm doing it in. It echoes. And so it's just very echo, echo, echo. Um, and truthfully, I don't think we're going to change anything with that setup until I move. So this might be what we do again. Um, but anyway, please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon and Nostalgia Corner. And I will see you next time. Bye. Oh,